Now back to some uh, thing again outside the scope of this uh, class, some formal mathematics. Um, I pointed out that um, random variables have probability distributions. We've um, already seen in the last uh, lecture um, two types of um, distributions, Gaussian distributions or the so-called normal distribution and uniform distributions. Uh, in the, for looking at events where there are two types of distributions are particularly important, Poisson distributions and binomial distributions, although due to the law of large numbers, they actually tend to look Gaussian when you, uh, when you um, apply them many times. <clears throat> the binomial distribution is what you get when you toss coins. If you toss uh, coins 500 times and ask how many times you get heads, the number of times you get heads will be uh, governed by the binomial distribution. Poisson distribution is um, sort of the continuous uh, version of that. You have a nuclear, a nuclear um, bunch of nuclear matter, and you count the number of decays per time. And there's a uniform probability, uh, uh, lambda dt, that um, a nucleus decays in time dt. And you can actually use either because they are essentially the same for in the li limit we're working. Um, <coughs> but uh, we do, I want to point out, we do need to make one assumption, and that's made in, sort of implicitly throughout all this analysis, that every event is independent of the previous events. When those two protons decide to collide, they don't remember what the previous protons did. They just do their thing independently of all previous events. So that's what's called an independent random variable. The other concept that's pretty important is identically distributed. I told you that the theory of proton-proton collisions gave you probabilities of things happening, so it gives a probability distribution. Every PP collision has the same probability distribution. The chance of getting a Higgs is the same chance every time. And most uh, data analysis problems you'll you will um, come across ha uh, have this feature of independent, identically distributed random variables. And this uh, really task of mathematics here, it gives us the most important result. And that is that the if you look at the mean and compare it to the error, the error divided by the mean, if we take n observations and calculate, say, the something gotten by taking all n together, which is possibly by summing them up, or taking their mean, or something like that. The error over the mean is one over the square root of n. And that's written out uh, here by, in the so-called uh, law of large numbers. But we don't need to go into those details. It defines what the, the mean we can think of as the average value. That's the expected value of that random variable. And the standard deviation is effectively the error, and we don't have to worry about it, just have an intuitive idea what error is. Is mathematically defined here, the square root of the average value of x minus mu squared, but we don't care about that. And then what, what counts is this, error over mean is one over square root of n. So if we take n events, one over the square root of n is square root of n. So if I observe n events, my error is square root of n. Very important result. Uh, it has lots of impact on the amount of effort needed to do something. Namely, if I want to uh, redu reduce the error by a factor of two, which is a reasonable goal, I actually have to take four times the time. Because if I only doubled the time, I would reduce the error by the relative error, which is all that counts by the square root of two. Whereas I wanted two, so I need four times the time. Uh, so this is, as I say, here we're looking at the theory of events and counting data. And this covers all sorts of things, in particular surveys. If you have n responses to a question, that's equivalent or similar to counting n events in a histogram. And the error is square root of n. So that's why you tend to, you'd like lots of people in your survey, because uh, otherwise you will um, get a significant error. And we will try to quantify these things in a little Python, Python piece of code. 
where we are, let's do a slightly artificial case, try to get pretty pictures, where we have a lot of, um, where we actually um, count the same number many times. We'll do that by imagining a situation where we have a survey which has 40,000 possible answers. We'll actually change this number later on, but here we're gonna initially do 40,000. And let's suppose we had this survey with 40,000 answers, 40,000 questions, <coughs> and assume each question was equally likely. And we um, did a million uh, people in the survey, then the expected uh, uh, number of um, uh, events in um, answers for each um, question is 25. And the error in 25 is 5, square root of 25. So what we're going to just plot then is we'll just look at all possible answers, 40,000 of them, and just plot the number of uh, um, times that question was answered positively. So this gives you a histogram, and that's shown here for um, 25 events counted for 40,000 times. Uh, here is uh, here is uh, 25. This thing is so-called one sigma array, so it's 30. And this is one sigma away the other side, that's 20. And um, I like to stress that you have two types of square root of n here. We have square root of 5 this way, and we have around the square root of 3,000 here, because there are around 3,000 answers for, for 3,000 counters of the 40,000 got um, are in this bin and on this bin. And the square root of 3,000 is um, whatever it is, is somewhere around uh, between uh, 50 and 60. So, so we have two square roots. We have a square root for the number of events in each bin, and we have a square root for the width of this distribution. Uh, this graph here points out that if we go to the above 30, this region here, is 30 up here. Then actually this red curve here, which I didn't actually discuss on the previous slide, is the so-called normal distribution. And we, as I stated, most things in life have normal distributions. This particular case, because 25 is not a very big number, um, doesn't exactly agree with a normal distribution, but it's pretty close. Look at this graph here. It's the red and the green curves are pretty close. However, you will find that uh, below 20, the green curve systematically lies below the red curve, and above 20, it lies above. And that's shown here. We have the real estimate of the errors, and you can see the green curve is above the red curve by amount uh, much greater than the errors. So there is a systematic shift here, which is just not important, because we never look, you tend not to look at things in this detail. You don't usually get take a million people in your survey and get such good statistics. So as I said, <coughs> we would get this if we asked a million people a question with 40,000 answers. Or if we took a million physics events, each with 40,000 outcomes, each equally likely. So either of those cases is governed by this simple case. Um, here's what I pointed out that um, if you look at the the middle of the um, distribution, 24 to 25 and 25 to 26. Um, the red curve um, expects uh, 3176 events in each of those bins. We observe 3179 and 3132 from our um, Python code, which is certainly within the square root of, uh, of 3176, which is 56. So our uh, near the middle of the of the curve, which is really what counts, because that's where most of the data is, we get good agreement between the normal distribution and my Python experiment. <coughs>